Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah. Ashhadu anna Muhammadar Rasulullah. Ashhadu anna Muhammadar Rasulullah. Hayya ala as-salah. Hayya ala as-salah. Hayya ala al-falah. Hayya ala al-falah. Allahu Akbar. Akbar. La ilaha illa Allah. Inna alhamdulillahi nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'afiruhu wa nu'min bihi wa natawakkala alayhi. ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يحده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الحدي حدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور مفدثاتها وكل مفدثة بضعة وكل بضعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار والعياذ بالله Brothers and sisters it was not of my topic to really choose about something else that's not to explain to myself and to the brothers on the virtues of Yom al Qiyam. Uh, Yom al Juma. The virtues of Yom al Juma. Sadly, the state of the Muslims, you feel like you have to do the khutbah twice. Because by the time the Imams come to the member, not even a quarter of 25% of the people that come to the Juma prayer are present. Subhanallah. By the time the Imam is in halfway in the Juma, maybe half of the masjid is full. By the end of it, everybody come for the Juma prayer. 
we stay behind on a day <clears throat> that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose to give the ummah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He chose not to give it to the followers of Musa alayhi wa sallam. Chose not to give it to the followers of Isa alayhi wa sallam. Yet this is the day where he can get the reward of fasting and praying at night and doing a jihad for every step you take from your house to, the, to your masjid, but we stay behind. The Prophet is right. He says, ما زال خوم يتأخرون حتى يؤخرهم الله People, we stay behind, we stay behind, we stay behind until it will please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to leave them behind. Your closeness to the Imam on Yomul Jumu'ah decides on how close you are to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on Yomul Mazid. Yomul Mazid in Jannah is the day the people of Jannah, may Allah make us of them. This is the day they see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the closer you are to the Imam on Yomul Jumu'ah, the closer you are to Allah on that day. You are close here, you be close over there. You are far here, you be far away. Inshallah, if Allah give us long life, so we will tell people if we have long life and we have another chance to make a khutbah, the khutbah will be on Yomul Juma. Things you can do, things you must do. Things you cannot do. Please, if you have your cell phone, put it down. It's not a cell phone, it's a silly phone. Because of this, you lose the reward of the biggest day, of the best day that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ever created. When you see teenagers either texting or playing with their phones, what the Imam is doing, the khutbah, you don't blame them much. You go back and blame the parents who did not teach their children that this is a day you cannot do this. It's more alarming if we see adults who are in their 30s, 40s, 50s and are still doing things on Jumu'ah when the Imam is on the member that nullifies the Jumu'ah. A brother prays Jumu'ah for years and years and years but does not have one reward of one Jumu'ah. Because he doesn't know what to do. We Muslims, we are too content with the status quo. The way it is today, I know one ayah today. Ask me 10 years later, it's the same ayah that I know. I haven't added one more ayah. But yet, I go to work every week, day in, day out. 365, seven days a week. I got to get more money. I don't ever check on myself. How many ahadith have I memorized this year? How many of the Quran have I read, have I memorized this year? Check yourself out before Allah reckon you and hold you accountable. Inshallah, that's the next topic for today's topic. Everyone knows and it's a Customary that the imams that give the khutbah on Yom al Jumu'ah always start by this what we call khutbatul haja. Khutbatul haja is what he say in Alhamdulillah, Namadu Anastayinu, until you go at the end. This always start by Alhamdulillah or in Alhamdulillah. We say in English, all praises are due to Allah SWT. We say it, but do we really know what to do right? of this kalima, it's all praises are due to Allah. Do we really apply this in our lives? Let's say, let's take a test, inshallah, we'll know. Maybe, at least we say the shukr, but do we get to the point of doing alhamd? Uh, thanking Allah for his ni'mah is a must. And if you don't, it's called kufrun ni'mah. 
being ungrateful for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you. So many nations and nations and nations were destroyed because they were ungrateful to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them as a bounty. The first example we can have is the city that's the dearest to all of us, Makkah. I guess if we all had to choose a place to die, if you are rightly minded, you will think, I want to die in Makkah or Majima. But yet, these are the people Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَضَرَبَ اللَّهُ مَثَلًا قَرْيَةً كَانَتْ آمِنَةً مُطْمَئِنَّ يَأْتِيهَا رِدْقُهَا رَغَدًا مِنْ كُلِّ مَكَانٍ فَكَفَرَتْ بِعَنْعُمِ اللَّهِ فَأَذَاقَهَا اللَّهُ لِبَاسَ الْجُوعِ وَالْخَوْفِ بِمَا كَانُوا يَسْنَعُونَ You see, don't you see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives an example of a city. كَانَتْ آمِنَةً It had peace, tranquility, مُطْمَئِنَّ Peaceful. The Arabs, as we know it before the advent of Islam, used to just be in a constant warfare. Everybody just whacks everybody, day in, day out. For years, the tribe just can't stop fighting. But no one can dare to go to attack Makkah because it's al-haram. They got this from the teaching of Prophet Ibrahim. Even in Jahiliyyah, people know you cannot attack Makkah. So Quraysh is in peace and tranquility. They get their sustenance as they wish. If you have to compare it now to one part of the world, maybe small difference would be America. There's no season for fruit here. Mangoes, avocados, everybody. Every time you want, you get whatever you want. Makkah used to be this one. But they were ungrateful to the biggest mercy that Allah can give you. Which is what? It's not food. It's not clothing. The biggest mercy Allah can give you is guidance. If you have Iman, you have your religion, it doesn't matter if you have one shirt for your whole life. It may not even matter for some people if you don't have a place to live, as long as you can sleep. We all know of Ahlu Safwa, the people that used to sleep in Medina, in the Prophet's Masjid. They were so poor. They give them a room. That's why the Ahlul Sofa, this one is how, it's, how it started. But as long as you have your religion, you have everything. So the Meccan was given a guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَكَفَرُوا بِعَنْعُمِ They not only rejected, but became ungrateful of all the blessings that Allah has given them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَوَلَمْ يَرَوْا أَنَّا جَعَلْنَا حَرَمًا آمِنًا وَيُتَخَطَّفُ النَّاسُ مِنْ حَوْلِهِمْ Don't the people of Mecca see that we gave them a haram that's secure and people are just picked up around them by war? It's not a lesson for them that all their neighbors are in, in constant warfare but they are in peace. Allah subhanahu, wa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues and says, وَلَقَدْ جَاءَهُمْ رَسُولٌ مِّنْهُمْ فَكَذَّبُوهُ فَأَخَذَهُمُ الْعَذَابُ وَهُمْ ظَالِمُونَ This is because a messenger came from them. Muhammad is Banu Hashim. Banu Hashim is a Quraysh. This is somebody you know from birth. But then you belied him. فَأَخَذَهُمُ الْعَذَابُ Then Allah's punishment got hold of them. وَهُمْ ظَالِمُونَ And they were the transgressors. He said, فَكُلُوا مِمَّا رَدَقَكُمُ اللَّهُ حَلَالًا طَيِّبًا وَاشْكُرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ إِن كُنْتُمْ إِيَّاهُ تَعْبُدُونَ Then eat of what Allah has given you as a blessing, people of Makkah. Thank Him. إِنْ كُنْتُمْ إِيَّاهُ تَعْبُدُونَ If you only worship Him. If it's only Him that you worship. This is what we say at least 17 times a day. 
at least for the Muslims who pray their five daily prayers, we say Iyaka now Abudu. We don't say now Abudu Ka. It is different. When you say now Abudu Ka, it's you. I worship you. But one Fatiha says Iyaka now Abudu. It's only you, nobody else. In kuntum iyahu ta'abudun. So, before the Prophet went to Medina, with all the headaches that he got from the people of Makkah, he called Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to punish them. Just like what happened to the people of Yusuf, seven years of famine, they ate whatever you can imagine they can eat. It. Bones, even the Arabs boycotted them. Boycott for at least seven years. And then after this, when the Prophet went to Medina, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَأَذَاقَهُمْ فَأَذَاقَهُمُ اللَّهِ لِبَاسَ الْجُوعِ The famine got hold of them. والخوف and fear. What happened after that? When the Prophet went to Medina, every now and then the Muslims are waiting somewhere in the corner to attack the people of Makkah. They are always in constant fear. And this is the result of rejecting the biggest ni'mah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them. We all know what who Fir'aun is. Why Fir'aun got destroyed. Fir'aun got destroyed because of his rejection of Musa. But when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Musa to Fir'aun, he told him and his brother Harun, فَقُولَ لَهُ قَوْلًا لَيِّنًا لَعَلَّهُ يَتَذَكَّرْ أَوْ يَخْشَى So when you go to Fir'aun, tell him nicely, give him nice words. Maybe he will be guided. Allah knows he will not be guided. But if it's the way you have to speak to someone like Fir'aun, how do Muslims, we Muslims speak to each other? You're only nice to me because you know me from somewhere. You're only nice to me because I'm of your skin color. You're only nice to me because I'm from your tribe. You're only nice to me because I'm from your country. And uh, I know you are a Muslim. You know that I'm a Muslim. But our law for each other is conditioned. It's broken into so many different divisions. For the ones who truly not understand the idea of the Ummah. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say about Firaun? He says, Kam taraku min jannatin wa uyun, wa dhuru'in wa maqamin kareem, wa na'amatin kanu fiha fakihin, kathalika wa awrathnaha qawman akharin, fama bakat alayhim al-sama, wa ma kanu munzarin. How many gardens did Firaun and his people leave? How many plantations? How many rivers? How many blessings they were enjoying? We destroyed them, we gave it to somebody else. Alhamdulillah, let's thank Prophet Muhammad وسلم, for his dua. This Ummah will not be destroyed like the older Ummah were. Aad, Thamud, Ashab al Aika. This Ummah, we are sure we're not going to be destroyed, wiped out. But we're going to have a lot of trials and tribulations. Story after story, we all heard about the in Surah Saba, and we say it in English, Sheba, where the queen Bilqis came from, the story of Suleiman and Bilqis. The same thing they did. Allah have mercy on them. They don't recognize it, ungrateful. They even ask Allah to give them, to make their lives difficult. He said, لَقَدْ كَانَ لِسَبَعٍ فِي مَسْكَنِهِمْ آيَ جَنَّتَانِ عَنْ يَمِينٍ وَشِمَالٍ you see, we had a, a sign with the people of Saba. The city used to have two gardens from left and right. 
He said, Kulu min rudqu rabbikum wa shkurula. Eat whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you, but thank him. Baldatun tayyiba. What a great land. Wa rabbun ghafoor. What a rub that you have that forgives everything. He said, فَأَعْرَضُوا فَأَرْسَلْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ سَيْلَ الْعَرْمِ وَبَدَّلْنَاهُمْ بِجَنَّتَيْهِمْ جَنَّتَيْنِ الزَّوَاتَ أَكُلٍ خَمْتٍ وَأَسْلٍ وَشَيْءٍ مِّنْ صِدْرٍ قَلِيلٍ ذَلِكَ جَزَيْنَاهُمْ بِمَا كَفَرُوا وَهَلْ نُجَازِي إِلَّا الْكَفُورِ He said, وَجَعَلْنَا بَيْنَهُمْ وَبَيْنَ الْقُرَى الَّتِي بَارَكْنَا فِيهَا قُرًا ظَاهِرًا They said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our cities, they used to have such big cities that you can be in one city at the end of one city and see the beginning of the other one. They say, this is too easy. فَقَالُوا رَبَّنَا بَاعِدْ بَيْنَ أَسْرَارِنَا Can you believe? Sallallahu alayhi wa ta'ala, make our trips far from away from each other. It's too close. He said, فَمَزَّقْنَاهُمْ كُلَّ مُمَزَّقْ Allah said, we torn them apart. Every single detail was torn apart. إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَا آيَاتٍ لِكُلْ صَبَّارٍ شَكُوْ This is an ayah, it's a, a sign, it's a lesson for every servant who has patience and who thinks he's, he's Rabb subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, we live in a land, honestly, as we everybody knows. It's not the most prosperous in the world, but one of the most prosperous in the world. I guess that's why we're all here. Even when you come to practice in your religion, personally, I don't know of any other country that lets you go freer, do religion as you wish to, even though it's not a Muslim country. Please, if you know any other country that allows you to practice your religion more than America does, please go there because it's better for you. Seriously. It's better, whatever you are, that you can practice your religion freely, that's the best place for you. It's not where you can get more money, no. If you know anywhere, that's better for you. When you come to practice your religion, I think it's better for you to go there. We have so much that we wasted. Your unneeded food, your unneeded clothing might be used by someone who is not so fortunate as you are. But in the eyes of Allah, this person is better than you. I come from West Africa, and Guinea especially. We have some of our scholars in the past, his name is Cherno Saad Dalin. He wrote a small prose this has really beautiful lines of prose. He says, وَرَجُلٌ كَانَ فِي الدُّنْيَا حَقِيرًا يُبَوَّأُ مَنْزِلَ النُّخْبَ الْكِرَانِ There is a person who no one will even say salam alaykum to him because he's not of the social status that you are. He's not as rich as you are. You probably would not even turn your eyes to look at him. But on Yom al Qiyamah, this person will be sitting with, with the highest seaters when he comes to Yom al Qiyamah. Nobody pays attention to him. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا محمد قائد الغر المحجلين الحمد لله الذي خلق السماوات والأرض وجعل الظلمات والنور ثم الذين كفروا بربهم يعدلون إن شاء الله for the خطبة itself we'll continue next time but I just wanted to have us to have basic reminders of whatever that's going on around the world.
an event has happened two days ago that has happened, I think, three times, maybe for the history of the Islamic nation that I know personally. The tawaf around the Kaaba was halted, right? The masjid itself is not closed, but there was no tawaf because of the coronavirus. So it's not to alarm people, but let's just be a little bit careful. If you somehow you find yourself that you have something that's not out of the ordinary, please check yourself out. Go to the hospital and then see if it's if it's not what, what this coronavirus is. Because if you have it and know about it, you might unintentionally pass it to your family, to your brothers in the masjid, to your co-workers. It's not to alarm anyone, but may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Because he is the ultimate protector. You can protect yourself. You do what you can do. Ultimately, Allah will have to protect you. Okay? So, on the name of Allah, uh, inshallah, I will end by this. Let's pay attention a lot to what the Prophet tells us. Uh, there was once a German doctor that asked a Muslim person, uh, why you think is the reason for Islamic nations to be behind? So ignorant he is, he goes, oh, because, you know, we have to follow uh, this and that. Our, our religion is, is really backwards, just like the complex that most of us have when you meet somebody from the West, especially of a different color, especially when they're not a Muslim. You meet a brother Muslim on the street, Muhammad, Salaam Alaikum. He has to look around first if he can say Salaam Alaikum back to you, because he's so embarrassed for people to know that he's a Muslim. Anyway, the German doctor asked him, why do you think the nations that are mostly Muslims technologically are behind? This is the answer he gives, because we do things that are really backward. The doctor says that's not true. That is not true. This is now somebody who is not a Christian that's rebuttaling a Muslim. You see, that's not true. It's because you people didn't apply what your prophet told you. One thing that your prophet told you, if you apply it, you will be the healthiest people in the world. And he says, what's that? He doesn't even know the hadith. How can you defend your religion if you don't have the knowledge to defend it? Your, somebody's ignorance can turn what's true into falsehood. Because you just cannot defend it. The doctor tells him this hadith. Prophet Sallallahu said, "Ma malaa adamiyun wi'aan sharran min batn." Bi hasb al-adam ukulat tuqimna sulba. Fa in kana la mahala fa fuluf li ta'amihi wa fuluf li sharabihi wa fuluf li nafasihi. The Prophet Sallallahu said, the son of Adam has never filled up a vase that's worse than his belly. A belly is a vase. You fill it up. He said, there's nothing you can fill up that's worse than this. He said, it's enough you eat something that just allows you to stand up to worship Allah. That's the whole ni'mah. That's the whole purpose of you eating. When you eat, you burp, brother, you have eaten too much. He said, the prophet says, but if you want to go beyond what can sustain your life, then eat third in the food, make the third water, and leave the other third empty so that you can breathe. My God, you eat to, the, to your throat. You can breathe. The doctor says, if you guys apply this, you will be the healthiest people in the world. He has nothing to say. He cannot say the prophet didn't say that. He has no excuse. This is the Christian who is teaching a Muslim about his religion. This is the state of the affair with us. Look, if someone criticizes you, you get upset. But if it comes from yourself, it's the people that Allah have guided that will accept it. It's the truth. 
for the imams that run the madrasas in the masajid or in the boroughs, ask them about the problems they have. Please, you cannot speak when the imam is doing a khutbah. You lose the reward of Juma, all you get is Zuhr. May Allah protect us. May Allah give us the correctness of the affairs. May Allah give us another chance. I hope I said something, one thing that's beneficial for myself and for the rest of the brothers and the sisters. Brothers, we all going to be held accountable. I will stop here, inshallah. I'm looking at two different clocks. I don't know which one is right. But inshallah, I will pray. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasanatan wa fi al-akhirati hasanatan wa qina adhaba nar. Rabbana la tudhi qulubana ba'da ihida hadithana wa hablana min ladun karhamatan in kanta al-wahab. Allahumma inna na'udhu bika min al-baras wal-jizam wal-junun wa min sayyi al-asqam. اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من البرص والجزام والجنون ومن سيء الأسقام إن الله ملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وصلوا وتسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد قوموا إلى صلاتكم يرحمكم الله الله أكبر الله أكبر الشهد أن لا إله إلا الله الشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاة قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله استو سو صفوفكم تراسوا حاذوا بين المناكب والأقدام وصلوا صلاة مواد الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين 